Welcome to the Path to Happiness and Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. In our last session, we ended with the account of Abraham's failed offering and the chosen people, his descendants, being consigned to slavery for 400 years and God about to tell Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Could things get much worse? But we'll see God and our fathers and mothers of faith make a way out of no way through some of the most dramatic events in biblical history, which led to this lineage becoming the chosen people to receive the Messiah. So let's continue where we left off. As Abraham grew old, he had no children. At that time, a couple could bequeath their inheritance to an adopted child who could receive it on the condition of supporting them and taking care of their funeral, or funeral arrangements. Abraham wanted his slave, Eliezer of Damascus, to be his heir in, 15, in Genesis 15, 2. But God did not give permission. God had another plan. As another option, wives who couldn't conceive were allowed to provide a maid who could conceive as a concubine to their husband in order to receive a child. The newborn was to be given by the maid to the wife as the wife's child. So Sarai gave her maid, Hagar the Egyptian, to Abraham as a concubine. Abraham was 60, uh, 80, uh, 86 years old, but he fathered a male child by Hagar named Ishmael. During those days, Sarai became jealous of Hagar and mistreated her. When Abraham was 99, God told him that he would help Sarai conceive a child and that they should name the child Isaac and that they would be receiving a huge blessing through Isaac, and that the baby must be circumcised. God changed at that point Abram's name to Abraham, which means father in almost all nations of the world, and he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. Sarah became pregnant. When Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old, they gave birth to a son, and they named him Isaac. Isaac was the first boy in Israel's history to be circumcised. He was circumcised eight days after his birth. Ishmael and Isaac were 14 years apart. Eventually, due to Sarah's jealousy of Hagar over Ishmael, she persuaded Abraham to cast them into the wilderness. Ishmael is the ancestor of the Arabs and the story of their survival is holy to Islam. In order to fulfill the foundation of faith that Abraham had failed, God had Abraham and Sarah repeat this restoration of Adam and Eve with another king, Abimelech. Abimelech robbed Abraham of his wife, Sarah, who again posed as his sister. After Abimelech, who represented Satan, robbed Abraham, who represented Adam, of his sister, who is actually his wife, Sarah, who represented Eve, God told Abimelech to return her together with bounteous goods to Abraham. It was then that God required Abraham to make the serious offering to offer his son, Isaac. Because Abraham had failed in the first symbolic offering, God gave him another chance to complete the symbolic offering through the condition of sacrificing his son, Isaac. Why did God give Abraham a second chance when there was only one chance given in Adam's and Noah's families? First, the number three, Abraham was the third, that number represents completion. Therefore, God's providence to lay the foundation for the Messiah, which began in Adam's family as the first dispensation, and continued in Noah's family as the second dispensation, had to conclude in Abraham's family, the third dispensation. God's principle requires that when the providence to lay the foundation for the Messiah takes place for the third time 
it must be brought to completion. Second, Satan had attacked both Adam and his son Cain, defiling the family over the course of two generations. Hence, according to the principle of restoration through indemnity, God could work to take back Abraham and his son Isaac over the course of two generations. Third, Abraham stood on the accumulated merit of Abel's and Noah's faithful hearts. When Abraham was called by God, he stood on the merit of both Abel, who succeeded in the symbolic offering at the formation stage, and Noah, who succeeded in the symbolic offering at the growth stage. Upon this double foundation, Abraham was able to make the symbolic offering at the completion stage. Although Abraham failed to cut the doves in half, because he stood on the merit of Abel's and Noah's faithful hearts, he received another chance to complete the symbolic offering. Hence, God called Abraham when he was 115 years old and when Isaac was around 15 years old. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Genesis 22, 2. Abraham had absolute faith and was obedient to God's command. The next morning, he got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him along with his son, Isaac. Then he chopped wood for the burnt offering and set out for the land of Moriah, which was a three-day journey. From his home in Beersheba to Mount Moriah in present-day Jerusalem is 80 kilometers. When they arrived at Mount Moriah, Abraham told the servants to stay with the donkey while he went on with Isaac. Isaac carried the wood while Abraham carried the fire and the knife. At this time, Isaac asked Abraham, Father, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham's heart was aching so much that he felt like it was being ripped apart. He simply replied that God would provide the lamb for the burnt offering. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the offer, the altar, he laid the wood in order, and he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Abraham's zeal to do God's will and his resolute actions carried out with absolute faith, love, and obedience lifted him up to the position of already having killed Isaac. Isaac was now separated of all the ties to Satan. Because of this, God said, for now I know that you truly fear God. And then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Because Abraham succeeded in this offering of Isaac, Isaac could carry on the providence of restoration in Abraham's family. Since Abraham had failed to fulfill his responsibility, he was not qualified to repeat the symbolic offering himself. Somehow God had to find a way to regard Abraham as though he had not failed in the symbolic offering and not caused the prolongation of the providence. This is why God commanded Abraham to offer Isaac. Abraham slaying his son was the same as Abraham slaying himself. 
Accordingly, when God brought Isaac back to life, Abraham was also resurrected to life. He was loosed from the ties that bound him to Satan when his symbolic offering had been defiled. So through the success of Isaac's offering, Abraham and Isaac attained inseparable oneness in their fidelity to God's will. At that time, Isaac was 15 years old, old enough to carry the wood, old enough to ask where the offering was. When Abraham bound him, Isaac could have refused. And when Abraham raised the knife, Isaac could have refused then as well. But Abraham had absolute faith in God, and Isaac showed absolute obedience and trust of his father. Because of their successful offering, their descendant, Solomon, was able to construct the temple. Through Isaac's offering, Abraham transferred his providential mission to Isaac. Abraham and Isaac worked together to pull the ram out of the thicket and offer it to God. In this way, Isaac, having inherited Abraham's mission, made the symbolic offering and restored through indemnity the foundation of faith. By knowing the heart of Abraham and Isaac on Mount Moriah, we can gain insight into the heart of God and Jesus at the time of the cross. And we gain insight into the heart of all parents as we suffer so that our children might have life. This history also reveals that God has a plan and that love and oneness with God will always lead to life. But God was not done with Abraham, as we will see when we look at what happened in Isaac's family. Thank you so much for listening, and God bless you.